I would like to advise all those present that notice of this regular meeting of April 17th, 2024 has been provided to the public in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey. Notice of time and place of this meeting has been included in the annual notice of meetings, which was posted and filed with the city clerk and with the Jersey Journal and the Star Ledger. An additional notice of time and place was posted and filed with the city clerk and was forwarded to the Jersey Journal and Star Ledger on April 15th, 2024. The regular meeting of the Municipal Council of the City of Bayonne is now in session. Ms. Medina, please call the roll. Mr. Booker? Here. Mr. Carroll? Here. Mr. Perez? Here. Ms. Weimer? Here. Mr. Lapalusa? Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne, Chapter 33, Planning and Development Regulations, and Chapter 35, Zoning Regulations, which was introduced and passed the first reading at the meeting held February 14th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law, with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting should be of April 17th at the meeting of March 13, 2024, and was postponed to this meeting of April 17th, is now before the Council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution given the ordinance a second reading is moved by Council Member Perez. Mr. Lapalusa, will you second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne, Chapter 33, Planning and Develop Development Regulations, and Chapter 35, Zoning Regulations. The Council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard. Concerning it, the Council President will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. Does anybody want to speak on 01? No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And a resolution ordering final passage? Move it. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. <laughs> 02 is an ordinance of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson, New Jersey, adopting a redevelopment plan entitled 455-461 Avenue C, redevelopment plan for the property located at 455-461 Avenue C, which is identified as Block 219, Lots 24.01, as shown on the official tax map of the city, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, which was introduced to pass the first reading at the meeting held March 13th was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this Aye. meeting of April 17th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. Madeline, I have to interrupt you just for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, whereas there was a discrepancy in the report filed with the planning board in connection with the redevelopment plan for 455-461 Avenue C with respect to the building height and whereas this discrepancy can be solved by virtue of a de minimis change to the ordinance currently under consideration, so now therefore be it resolved that the ordinance shall be amended to reflect the following. Minimum building height stories, five stories and 55 feet. The maximum building height would be six stories and 68 feet. Okay, and that would be a resolution after the public hearing because it's an ordinance, so people can come up and, and talk about this. Um, after the public hearing is concluded and you complete your discussions, I think that would be the prudent time to make the motion to amend the ordinance, and then the ordinance uh, would be voted on. If that, ordinance, if that resolution is approved, then the ordinance would then be voted on with that de minimis change. And I believe we have the developer's attorney here uh, today uh, to uh, affirm that this limitation that's set forth, and, and this there was, arises out of a discrepancy in a report that was issued by our planner on, 
uh, March 11th as opposed to March 13th. There was a, a, the word minimum was used instead of the word maximum, and this will cure that. Uh, but I think it would be uh, prudent if when this um, motion is made for this resolution after the public hearing that we have the developers only come up and confirm that the this indeed for him is also a de minimis change. Because I don't, I don't think it, it, you could really believe that a planner would say your building has to be a minimum of five stories and 55 feet. Um, I think what he meant to say was a maximum, but I, I think the, the cure is that, or if that's the minimum, the maximum is six stories and 68 feet. So, um, but that would be after you have your public hearing. If anybody wanted to come up and talk about this, now would be the time to talk about it. So I have a resolution moved by the council president uh, giving the ordinance second reading. Mr. Carroll, will you second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Booker? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance of the City of Bayonne, County of Hudson, New Jersey, adopting a redevelopment plan entitled 455-461 Avenue C redevelopment plan for the property located at 455-461 Avenue C, which is identified as Block 219, Lot 24.01, as shown on the official tax map of the City of Bayonne, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? Move. Second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Uh, Madeline, <clears throat> before I place my vote, I'd like to make all of my colleagues as well as the community aware. Okay, I guess we can push. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we can go ahead and push, but I'm, I, I have no objections to this project um, the way we have uh, worked it out. So I vote aye. And Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. And then we have a resolution to amend. Who'd like to move it? Move it. Second. And on that motion to amend, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Mr. We Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Do you want to take comments from Mr. Maselli? Yes, Mr. Maselli? Yes. Good evening. For the record, Michael Maselli. I'm the uh, developer's attorney. Um, as Mr. Coffey stated, there were there were two memos issued in connection with this redevelopment plan. Some, a memo on March 11th before the planning board meeting cleaned up some little knit nat things uh, to the redevelopment plan. And then there was the hearing in front of the planning board on March 12th. And then on March 13th, um, that March 11th memo got supplemented with a, oops, we, you know, the redevelopment plan says uh, minimum is five, five uh, stories, 55 feet. We're okay with it going to, um, Instead of that, which would allow us to go whatever height we wanted to, we're okay with going to six stories, 68 feet. Okay, and that, that's what the motion said. And, and you're comfortable with the fact that it, for you it's a de minimis, it's, for us it's de minimis, it, it corrects something, so. Agreed. All right, and then, then the next thing would be the vote on the ordinance as amended. All right. And a resolution ordering final passage as amended. Move it. With that being said, okay. before we go, uh, Madeline, and take our vote. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> um, as, is, as is customary, I have um, been the eternal thorn in Mr. Maselli's side, um, <clears throat> a place which I hold near and dear. So I will share with everyone that we have made um, some improvements, and I think why um, that the amendment of that ordinance is not a big deal, because we had already uh, asked Mr. Maselli and the developers to keep the project uh, below those and within those those terms already, which they had agreed to. So it it does not exceed what is being um, what has been allowed for and approved in the amended ordinance. Um, so I'm very happy about that. It will not be a hugely uh, large building standing out on the corner. In addition, we have improved. Uh, we've worked together and improved. Um, both their choice of colors 
as well as the uh, streetscape, the view from the ground so that when our community is walking by, you're not walking by a brick wall. You're not, you know, you're looking in through some clear glass, you're looking into some wonderful warm streetscapes. So all of that has been incorporated as well. Um, the uh, ground floor has also been uh, pushed back as we requested, which allows for a greater area for pedestrian traffic and bicycling and things of that nature. Um, as we said, the height is appropriate. Um, and most important, um, what this project is going to do for our com community is it is going to provide for, pay for, and even undertake the work for the community park that is located directly across the street on 18th Street and Avenue C, it will encompass, this plan will encompass um, total refurbishment of that park as well, which will be inclusive for all children um, of varying abilities uh, to utilize that area, and it will become what, what should be um, a wonderful recreation area for our children in that neighborhood. So I am 100% um, in favor of this project, and I thank uh, the developer as well as his attorney who's here with us for um, putting forth that contribution to our community. So, thank you. And with, uh, you're welcome. And with that, on the resolution for final passage, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? I vote aye on this, um, but I reiterate my call from last week. This and several items on the agenda tonight are, for lack of a better phrase, they have been in the pipe. So it would be unfair at the goal line to change the rules of the game. But going forward, I think we should look at, especially on uh, items such as this, a resolution that I hope to introduce next month and then vote on subsequent of new multifamily developments providing 20% workforce or AMI regulated units. I am especially reminded of this tonight because last night a Board of Ed meeting was held where raises were meted out to administration as well as the potential for a 2% tax increase. Several things need to be said. One, that increase comes from the school board, not from this body. Two, when it hits your wallet, don't blame the teachers because from what I saw of the agenda, they didn't see dollar one. And when we look at what's happening in our community and communities throughout the country, it is important that we take care, take care of the working man because as somebody who reports to a classroom every day, it reminded me that the working man might be considered a second-class citizen while the wealthy do very, very well here and throughout the country. And, and this ordinance that I propose is especially necessary. Just from our census data alone, in 2023, the average tax uh, in the city was $10,400. The average teacher in years one through 10 makes up to $63,000, which means you're taking home anywhere from thirty-six dollars to $41,000. And the average rent as of 2024 was $2,100, which means you've spent half your income just keeping the, the door locked and the roof over your head before you even reach for the light switch. It is a crisis. And if I, if I appear emotional, or combative or loud, it is because I'm trying to use a tone that will cut through the din created by the decaying moral corpse before us. This is a civil rights issue. It's an issue that needs to be dealt with because providing dignity, providing the means to keep the wolf from the door and your roof over your head is important. And especially when we look at it from this perspective where you can, you can do something that does not pr require the government to add dollars, it just requires some oversight, I think is important. And it would give renters, it would give homeowners even, dignity. Because it doesn't show any signs of decreasing inflation, cost of living, and so on. Mr. Carroll, this also comes on top of the state aid giving $20 million to the Board of Ed. I know that you and I had discussed this, but didn't mention it this time. So. Um, Anyway, we'll, we'll study that a little bit more and we'll, we'll revisit that, I'm sure. Okay. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 
1203 is an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Bayonne County of Hudson State of New Jersey amending ordinance number 0-23-52 approving an amended and restated financial agreement buying between the City of Bayonne and 197 Avenue E Urban Renewal LLC put a property located at 197 Avenue E to correct the Scrivener's error where the subject property was incorrectly identified as block 221 lots 12.02 and to correct the block and lot as block 221, lot 12.01, as shown on the official tax map of the city. It was also introduced at the first, given first reading at the meeting of March 13th, was po published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law, with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 17th, is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution given the ordinance second reading is moved by the council president, Ms. Weimer, will you second? Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance amending ordinance number 023-52, approving an amended and restated financial agreement buying between the city of Bayonne and 197 Avenue E Urban Renewal, LLC. Put a property located at 197 Avenue to correct the Scrivener's error where the subject property was incorrectly identified as Block 221, Lot 12.02, and to correct the block and lot to Block 222, Lots 12.01, as shown on the official tax map of the city. And the council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? I move. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And resolution ordering final passage? I move. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 04 is an ordinance amending ordinance number 0-23-59 authorizing the execution of an encroachment agreement by and between the city of Bayonne and 197 Avenue E Urban Renewal LLC for the property located 197 Avenue E to correct the Scrivener's error where the subject property was incorrect inc incorrectly advertised and I think that's the wrong It's the same thing, it was to correct the block and lot from block 221, lot 12.02, to correct the two, block 221, lot 12.01. And which was introduced and passed first reading at a meeting held March 13th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law, with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 17th, is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a re resolution moved by the council member Booker, given this ordinance second reading. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On that re resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, amending ordinance number 023-59, authorizing the execution of an encroachment agreement by and between the city of Bayonne and 197. Avenue E Urban Renewal LLC for the property located at 197 Avenue E to correct the Scrivener's error where the subject property was incorrectly identified as Block 221, Lot 12.02, and to correct the block and lot to Block 221, Lot 12.02, as shown on the official tax map of the city. And the council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest, bless you. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to Move close? It. Second. And on that motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And a resolution ordering final passage. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 
1005 is an ordinance vacating those lands and premises known as a portion of Memorial Drive North, Veterans Memorial Highway, and Harbor Place, more particularly des described in Exhibit A, attached here to pursuant to and in accordance with NJSA 40 colon 67-1, which was introduced and passed the first reading at a meeting held March 13th, was, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law with notice that it will be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 17th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution moved by Council Member Perez giving the ordinance second reading. Ms. Weimer, will you second? Second. On the resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance of the city of Bayonne vacating the lands and premises known as a portion of Memorial Drive North, Veterans Memorial Highway, and Harbor Place, more particularly described in Exhibit A, attached hereto pursuant to and in accordance with NJSA 40-67-1. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? A move. Second. On the motion to close, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And resolution ordering final passage? Move. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 06 is an ordinance of the city of Bay Bayonne vacating those lands and premises known as Road B and a portion of Memorial Drive North, more particularly described in Exhibit A, attached to, pursuant to NJSA colon 40 colon 67 dash 1, which was introduced and passed the first reading at the meeting held March 13th, was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 17th, is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution given the ordinance second readings moved by the council president, Ms. Weimer, will you second? Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance of the city of Bayonne vacating those lands and premises known as Road B and a portion of Memorial Dry North, pursuant to NJSA 40 colon 67-1. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against objections to or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? I'll move. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And a resolution ordering final passage? Move. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 07, I will take a motion to postpone to the meeting of May 15th. Who'd like to move it? Move it. Second. And on the motion to postpone, 07, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 08 has been withdrawn. <clears throat> 09 is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne chapter 19 fire prevention and protection which was introduced and in passed first reading at the meeting held March 13th was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law for, would be considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 17th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing and a resolution moved by the council president giving the ordinance second reading. Mr. Booker, will you second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne, chapter 19, fire prevention and protection. 
The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? Move it. Second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? I just want to point out to everyone that our fire department does a wonderful job and, and ensures that they meet their requirements of doing these inspections and running these tests um, each and every year upon the time that they should. So um, I do appreciate that. And I, I'd also like to point out that the last time these fees were raised, um, in his own words, Jay Coffey had blonde hair. So it's been quite some time. So I, I thank you for keeping them reasonable for as long as we possibly can. Uh, could have, and um, with that, I vote aye. I'm never robbing a bank with you. <laughs> Mr. Lapalusa. I also um, want to say I, I appreciate the fact that it wasn't just a large uh, raise in one year and that they're phasing this in over three years. And with that, I, I agree with my colleague. The fire department does a great job. And, and we need to bring this up. <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, we need to bring this up to... Um, for this uh, coming year, and I vote aye. And I have a resolution to for final passage. Second. And on the resolution for final passage, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 010 is an ordinance amending ordinance number 023-55 entitled an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne chapter 7 traffic to correct an error regarding the section amended to read section 7.27-1 chapter 7 traffic which was introduced and passed the first reading at a meeting held March 13th was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law with notice that it will be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 17th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing. And a resolution moved by Council Member Carroll given the ordinance second reading. Ms. Weimer, will you second? Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Delapalooza? Aye. Second reading is by title, an ordinance amending ordinance number 0-23-55, entitled an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne chapter 7 traffic to correct an error in regarding the section amendment to read section 7-.27-1 chapter 7 traffic. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? Move it. Second. And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. And a resolution ordering final passage? Move it. Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 011 is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the city of Bayonne chapter 7 traffic which was introduced and passed the first reading at the meeting held March 13th was published in the Jersey Journal and posted on the bulletin boards required by law with notice that it would be further considered for final passage following a public hearing at this meeting of April 17th is now before the council for its consideration and a public hearing and a resolution moved by Council Member Perez giving the ordinance second reading. Ms. Weimer, will you second? Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. <coughs> second reading is by title, an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 7 traffic. The council is now ready to give all persons interested in this ordinance an opportunity to be heard concerning it. The council president will recognize anyone who wishes to speak. No protest against, objections to, or statements in favor of this ordinance or its passage has been filed with me. May I have a motion to close? And on the motion to close, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 
And a resolution ordering final pass. I move. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Ms. Weimer? I'm sorry, aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Okay. Our speaker is Anthony. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, I just wanted to start by saying I can't believe that I have to go in front of my city council to discuss a dog park that was built 19 yards from my house. 19 yards. I can't understand how this was approved. I can't even understand how this was an idea. No one in the neighborhood can. I can't understand how no one would have realized how much of a nuisance this would be for the people on O'Brien Court and Avenue A. As you all know, in October, the Cub Scouts petitioned for this dog park in the lower part of the 16th Street Park. I remember the date because my own dog, Bean, he died three days prior. You can't make this up. If you ask the Cub Scouts' mom, they'd probably remember me as the person signing the petition with tears in my eyes. I specifically asked the Cub Scouts where they were proposing the dog park. They said the lower part of the 16th Street Park, near the other amenities, with parking far away from people's homes. I thought it was a great idea. So did my neighbors. The Cub Scouts even measured two spots in the lower park. On Tuesday, March 19th, the city started building a dog run 19 yards from my house and others' houses. My fiance called the city's DPW office, who told her that 300 residents had signed a dog park petition that the Cub Scouts advocated for. Those 300 residents signed a petition for a dog park in a completely different location. No one surrounding the upper park area would have signed that petition if the Cub Scouts had proposed locating the dog park in the upper park, which borders about 15 homes, has no parking. How many of those 300 signatures do you think are currently being uh, disrupted by the location that the city ultimately chose? The city wasn't transparent about the new dog location. None of the city's meeting minutes or agendas referencing locating the dog run in the upper park. The city hasn't even posted its meeting minutes from a month ago. The public notice posted by the city for a February public hearing was about renovations in the lower park and did not reference the dog park. The only reference to the dog park being proposed in the upper location is buried in a YouTube video on the city's YouTube channel with a mere 100 subscribers. In that video, Tommy Cotter, the DPW head, labels the upper park as quiet. Perhaps it's quiet because there's 15 houses bordering it. He actually proposed bringing the Cub Scouts to the upper park to see if they liked the spot. And he said the upper park was a place where everyone would be happy. If the city had notified the residents of this idea, they would have foreseen that the residents would in fact not be happy. Moreover, why did the Cub Scouts receive notification? and a chance to visit and opine on the new location. But local residents didn't even receive the courtesy. Cotter also said the park was underutilized, and he proposed adding lights, a sprinkler system, and turf, costing about a half a million dollars. Did he ask the local residents if it was underutilized? Did he ask the Bayonne residents if spending half a million dollars to turn a frequently used residential park into a dog park is a good use of all of our money as taxpayers? I've been told that the city voted for the dog park, but that Cotter finalized the location. I didn't vote for Tommy Cotter. I voted for the people sitting in front of me. When Mayor Davis took that picture touting the success on getting a dog park in, did he look behind him at the row of houses less than 20 yards from the dog park? Did he think about those residents? The residents vote and pay taxes. Dogs don't. The first day the fence post went in, I walked out to the dog park and happened to meet Cotter. I'm sure you all know what he said to me, but I'm going to reiterate it to let everybody know. He told me, and quote, I could put a Ferris wheel next to your house and blast music all day if I wanted. I cannot believe that an elected official that I voted for would appoint someone who would talk that way to a Bayonne resident. I can't believe that Cotter, someone who oversees Bayonne's public spaces, was so ill-informed about the state 
and local noise ordinances. Shouldn't someone in charge of the city parks be more educated about the noise levels of the dog parks? And if they didn't have that knowledge, shouldn't they have the common sense to proactively research any of that information? Shouldn't someone in charge of the city parks be more knowledgeable about how many people actually use that upper 16th Street Park? There are dozens of people in that small pocket park, including camps and a lot of other gatherings. Cotter put the dog park right in the middle of the park, in a, around a pre-existing circular walkway. People have to recreate around a fenced-in dog park in an area that takes up 50% of the park. I've seen elderly people simply walking and getting barked at. I've seen parents pushing baby strollers, getting aggressively barked at. Children are now sandwiched in the corner of the park and trying to play soccer and recreate. I've seen a lot of people walking their dogs and they get barked at because, right, not all dogs use dog parks. Some owners have really shy dogs. Um, other owners have reactive dogs. Other owners don't want to bring the bacteria and the dirt that comes into the, from a dog park into their homes. So essentially, this is no longer a residential pocket park for residents. It is a dog park for a specific subset of residents. I'm sure you all know that if there's one thing that Bayonne residents are really passionate about, it's parking. People are driving to this new dog park. And because it's at the top of the park, they park in the neighborhood. The hundreds of parking spots in the lower park aren't even being used for visitors to the dog park because they're way too far to walk. My neighbors, tax-paying residents, come home from a long day of work and have to park blocks away. Did the city take how many people would drive to this new location into consideration? Clearly, they didn't. I've seen it with my own eyes. And that's fine. The city can make as many bad decisions with its property as it wants. It doesn't have to give residents notice. It doesn't have to consider parking, traffic issues, environmental issues. City officials might even think that there are already enough public parks. But the city can't create a nuisance to its residents. Installing a dog park in the backyard of O'Brien Court residents and in the front yards of Avenue A residents is exactly that. A nuisance that interferes with our daily use and enjoyment of our property. The property that we bought and the property that we pay taxes on. Did anybody consider a noise study? Did anyone consult the city planner? Did anyone do any research whatsoever about the ramifications of putting a dog park so close to residents' houses? A simple Google search would have shown you that other cities in our own county have had significant problems with dog parks much further away. The city's ex existing two dog parks are much, much further away from homes. The dog park has been finished for the past three weeks. Since opening, there's been countless disturbing noise violations, and we haven't even had that much good weather. There's dogs barking at squirrels at 5.30 in the morning, dogs fighting each other in the middle of the day, dogs consistently and frequently barking for whatsoever reason, to the point where I left my house on Sunday because it was so constant I couldn't take it anymore. One single dog bark can be about 60 to 110 decibels, with the majority of dog barks being between 80 to 90 decibels. I counted it, I got a decibel meter. And the state's noise ordinances, which the city has adopted, states that permittable noise levels is 65 decibels during the day and 50 decibels at night. What do you think the decibels are when there's multiple dogs just barking constantly? Cotter didn't consider the topography of the park. It's essentially a bowl surrounded by homes, a children's playground, and the fire department. When dogs bark, there's significant amplification. I've recorded every noise violation, and I've sent some to the city. But what can we do to get the, noise to get the nuisance relocated away from the residential homes? Do we need to call the non-emergency police line every time there's a noise violation? Should we build a nuisance case against the city? Have the DP come out there, put a dog in the park, and have them measure the noise decibel levels? I've measured them myself. I live in a dog park now. The videos I've sent to the council, to the mayor, and the city planner show how much of a disturbance this dog park is. Those videos show that the dog park is significantly interfering with using and enjoying our home. I can't leave my house every time it's a nice day. It's starting to get hot, and we can't even keep the windows open because of the barking. Is the city gonna reimburse me for my electric bills? What else are me and my neighbors supposed to do now? Start yelling at residents when their dogs are barking? Should we all print signs to put on our property saying that the city built this dog park and doesn't care about the residents, they only care about the dogs? 
Should we go on Channel 12? Should we contact newspapers? Should we get four dogs and use the dog park as an extension of my own sir, backyard? You have, to, you have to wrap up your I comments. am wrapping up, sir. So I'm standing here predominantly talking about how I've been affected, but my neighbors have, have it just as bad as I do, if not worse. One neighbor's baby is always woken up by the barking. Another's own dog freaks out when the other dogs start barking. So now it's just dogs barking everywhere. So I'm gonna, I have much more, but I'm just gonna fast forward. You're supposed to have five minutes yep. of talking okay. time, so please wrap it up. Okay, so this is not just something I'm mad about. This is something that interferes with my daily life and is a constant violation. This is not something that will just blow over without a change. I'm the nice one. My fiance, who has been a lawyer for over 20 years, is not. Trust me, I know, I never win an argument. We have the resources and we have the connections to fight this. I sincerely hope that the city is willing to spend a nominal amount on relocating the dog park rather than $100,000 of taxpayers' money on legal fees to fight a dog park that violates a noise ordinance and disturbs so many residents. Thank you. Thank you. I want to address uh, the things that you mentioned. Um, if there's a dog in the yard next door to you that's even closer than where this dog park is, and it could be multiple dogs that are allowed there. So that's another possibility that could, you know, disturb your uh, peace. Now wait, this is not, you had your statement, I just want to give a couple things back and forth. Uh, when the scouts came here, the scouts were told that we could not promise them the location of where this dog park would be. They understood, they agreed to that. And there's no way that the scouts could come and tell us exactly where they want it and we just blanket agree with them. We have to go out and have our engineers look at where we're gonna put this. And we also looked at distance from the home. So I've had discussions with uh, Director Cotter and we talked a little bit about this park and you called it a pocket park. This is much larger than a pocket park. Um, so I would say that um, the location, although I can understand and we really don't want to fight with you over this. That would be the last thing we really want to do is fight with anybody. I think the intentions were very, very good to put a park that would make dog owners very happy to have that there since there was no dog park before. So you make dog owners happy and residents unhappy. So you, again, you had your statement. I have to give my statement now, okay? Um, I, again, I'm sorry that you're unhappy about it, but there are a lot of people who contacted me that really love the dog park. And as far as what Director Carter does, I think he does a great job in the parks, and I'll tell you how I know, because I happen to be the manager of all the county parks. And so I know what he does. And, and by the way, the dog parks, we have at least one in every major park in the county. So this is an addition to something that we never had before. And again, sorry for your inconvenience, but we have to try and keep everybody happy and it's almost an impossibility to make everybody happy. So we're shooting for the majority, the most people that we can make happy. Mr. Cotter, are you okay? Do you wanna say a few words or you're fine with what I said? Okay. Next I, week. Oh, go ahead. Well, I, would, I would agree well, with you, the... You want to say a few words? I'm sorry. No, that's all right. I, I would agree with the statements the council president said. And going forward, you have submitted uh, videos and so forth. And if we keep an eye on the situation and you target times, perhaps we can work with the Parks Department to only open that for a certain period of the day as opposed to leaving it open in perpetuity. We could provide some sort of a hour schedule for the best time. Again... As the council president said, we're trying to make everybody happy, but it is a losing task. So let's start with small solutions that are within our possibility before we go to the extremes. I'll, I'll begin calling the police every time I hear the, the city's breaking the noise ordinance. So that's fine. Mr. Mr. Booker? Um, excuse me, sir. How are you? Um, Councilman Booker here. Uh, listen, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, I hear your argument. I understand what you're, you're saying as a, as a resident in that area. And I agree with my counsel and my colleagues here that we're not looking to fight about this. 
Okay, but what I'm saying is there are dog owners, I'm sure, where you live. Because I actually walk my dog. I don't bring them to the park, but I walk them down 16th Street Park. And there are dog owners. And when we walk along the area that you're referring to, there are dogs in the yards. So there's people that have dogs there. Closer so, than the so amount of there. I don't know exactly where your location is, but the, no, no. What I'm saying is, you're talking about the barking dogs and the ordinance. When I walk past with my dog, I've sent, I've sent, yeah, I've sent the mayor, uh, the city yeah. planner. All right, please, uh, you, everybody I'm, gets the so statement said, time. All right. I, I don't mind sending the whole All right, Mr. Booker, you. please wrap it up because we can't have this dialogue going back like this. All right, well, look, I'll wrap it up real quick. But here's the deal. What I'm trying to say to you is, and, and I agree with uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Councilman uh, Neil Ward, um, Neil Ward, I'm sorry, Neil Carroll. The fact of the matter is we have to find a solution and work together, collaboration. And, and I think what he just stated is a fantastic idea. We have to come up with a solution in terms of hours to the park or something to that nature. We're not going to sit here and fight over a dog park. I'm done. Okay, sir, we, we heard your statement. Thank you very much. Madeline, please call the next speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Michael Resigno. Good evening. Uh, this coming Saturday is Earth Day, and I would like to congratulate the uh, Department of Public Works and everything on setting up the program for Saturday, which is clean where you live. And I'm hoping that all the residents of Bayonne do come out, clean where they live, clean the streets, and then they can see this garbage that's accumulating, what kind of garbage, and let them realize that this is a peninsula city. We have a great waterfront walkways around the city, and all that trash that washes up starts someplace, it starts in the streets, it starts around the homes. This is where, if it's cleaned, if it's not in the street, it won't be in the bay. If it's in the street, it's in the bay, then it's in the ocean. So I hope everybody takes part in clean where you live this coming Saturday, Earth Day, and keep Bayonne clean, green, and there'll also be a barbecue and a Earth Day celebration down at 16th Street Park when it's all done starting at 12 o'clock. Thank you again, Public Works. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. And you did a great job last week with the Nature Club cleaning up Collins Park yeah. as well. And thank you, yeah. City Council, for giving us support there. Thank you. Our next item is an ordinance for introduction. It is an ordinance of the Excuse city me, of Excuse me, Madeline? Bayonne. Yeah. Madeline? Hold on. Mr. Solari. Hi, uh, Tom Solari, 8 West Grand Street. Uh, a few things. I'd like to thank the fire department for the... Uh, job that they do for us. This year was a, a busy year for them. I'm hoping that we get no more fires the rest of this year. Uh, I'd like to th uh, thank Tommy Cotter, uh, the pictures I sent you for the uh, traffic light on 8th Street and Broadway. We still have some uh, light poles, that ped poles that have to be installed. 53rd Street, uh, you have to put a whole new uh, foundation in near the uh, Broadway Diner. Before somebody gets hurt, it's going to be uh, liable for, uh, it's going to be on us. So make sure the uh, pet poles get put up because it's, I see it every, I see it every single day of the week. They go down on the county, we got to put them up. So I just want to say thank you to the uh, fire department, police department for all the, the great work they do. All right, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tommy. Back to 012. It is an ordinance approving a financial agreement buying between the City of Bayonne and Avenue E. Loss Urban Renewal LLC for the property located at 196 200 Avenue E, which is identified as Block 458, Lots 7, 8, and 9, as shown on the official tax map of the City of Bayonne, and a resolution fixed on Wednesday, May 15th at 6 p.m. in the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. It's moved by the council president, Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. 
2013 is an ordinance approving a financial agreement buying between the City of Bayonne and 1207-1211 JFK Boulevard Urban Renewal LLC for the property located at 1207-1211 JF Kennedy Boulevard, which is identified as Block 24, Lots 2 and 3, as shown on the official tax map of the city, and a resolution fixed on Wednesday, May 15th at 6 p.m. in the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. It's moved by the Council President. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On the resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. 014 is an ordinance amending and supplementing the revised general ordinances of the City of Bayonne Chapter 7 traffic and a resolution fixed in Wednesday, May 15th at 6 p.m. in the Dorothy E. Harrington Council Chambers as a time and place for a public hearing and final passage. It is for restrictive parking zones. And a resolution moved by Council Member Carroll. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Communications is a consent agenda a resolution <coughs> ordering the following communications to be received and filed. It's moved by the council as a whole and it covers C1 through C31. Any questions on the communications? And on the communications, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Officers' reports is a resolution moved by the council as a whole. It is a resolution ordering the following officers' reports to be received and filed and any resolutions incorporated within them to be adopted. It covers OR1 through OR3. Any questions on the officers' reports? And on the resolution for officers' reports, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. Consent resolutions is a resolution, again, moved by the council as a whole, ordering resolutions to be, received, uh, to be adopted. It covers CR1 through CR20. Any questions on the consent resolutions? Um, can we take CR19 out? Because I'd like to do that Absolutely. separate and read that resolution. So we'll vote on everything, everything except, else but except CR19. Yep. On the remaining resolutions, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. For CR 19, I'd like to read a resolution um, for the old Bayonne Community News. Whereas the Bayonne Community News was founded as the Community News in 1978 by Edward Kukowski and was sold to the Hudson Reporter in 2004. And whereas the Hudson Reporter was founded in 1983 by Hoboken developer Joseph Barry. And whereas Luca Mulatto joined the company in 1983 and David Unker joined in 1985, both remaining minority owners until Joseph Barry sold his majority share to Mulatto and Unger in 1999. And whereas in 2018, the company was sold to Cherry Hill-based newspaper media group and whereas the Bayonne Community News and the Hudson Reporter both worked diligently to, perform, to inform the greater Bayonne community of local happenings, upcoming events, and political intrigue, highlighting upstanding citizens and noteworthy organizations on a weekly basis through its special sections like Letters to the Editor, Education, Religion, and the Mayor's Column, all of which were as informative as they were entertaining and were must-reads for everyone in Bayonne. And, Whereas the Bayonne Community News reporters worked diligently to get up-to-date and reliable information to the public during such emergencies as 9-11, the pandemic, and Hurricane Sandy. And whereas at the time of the closure of the newspaper, the Bayonne Community News was populated by staff writers Daniel Israel and Jordan Call, managing editor Gene Richings, art directors Terry Bish and Mary Helen Fink, advertising manager Tish Krasik, senior account executive Ron Krasik, and bookkeeper Sharon Metro, and whereas given how integral the Bayonne Community News was to the fabric of the city of Bayonne, this municipal council would be remiss if it did not recognize the cultural and historic importance of this weekly publication. Now, therefore be it resolved that the municipal council of the city of Bayonne 
hereby honors the Bayonne Community News, its ownership, and its staff for the benefits they visited upon the citizens of the city of Bayonne through their collective efforts of keeping our community informed and entertained for 41 years. And be it further resolved that the Municipal Council of the City of Bayonne hereby recognizes the closure of the Bayonne Community News on January 20th, 2023 as a very sad, sad day for the City of Bayonne and formally confirms that the Bayonne Community News was an important part of the lives of several generations of Bayonne residents and that it left an indelible mark on our city's culture and history. And if we can move this as a whole, I would really appreciate that. Okay. Mr. Israel, do you want to make a comment? Yeah, if you don't mind. Hi, how are you guys? Uh, good evening. My name is Daniel Israel, the former staff writer for the Bayonne Community News. Uh, for more than three years, I wrote for the print newspaper covering this great city, as well as its sister newspaper, The Hudson Reporter, covering six other towns, including Union City, North Bergen, Secaucus, Weehawken, West New York, and Guttenberg. From breaking news stories to hard-hitting investigative pieces holding officials and institutions to account, to heartwarming feature stories highlighting outstanding individuals, there was something in the Bayonne Community News for everyone to read and enjoy. Covering our beats with passion and drive, it was a shock to my colleagues, manager, managing editor Gene Richings, staff writer Jordan Cole, and the rest of the editorial staff mentioned in the resolution when the rug was pulled out from under us and we were laid off as the print newspapers closed. In the following weeks, other publications under the umbrella company that owned the Bayonne Community News also suffered the same fate. So I'd like to thank the City Council for commemorating the print newspaper with this resolution following the one-year anniversary of its closure this past January. The loss of the, historical, of the historic local institution right here in Hudson County is no doubt a symptom of a larger trend of the decline of the print news industry and the entire news industry in general, nationwide, and it undoubtedly impacts the spread of information throughout the community and civic engagement. It is important to remember for history's sake the impact of the Bayonne Community News and the news it broke. This is especially pertinent considering the online news archive of the two print newspapers was removed from the still existent, but no longer the same online website. The website may or may not be under a new owner, but shows signs of some type of possible AI involvement in the creation of new content. In addition, many old articles written under the former staff, such as myself and my former colleagues, were removed from the website, although some have slowly returned, but with the bylines purged of the original author. Perhaps this resolution can begin the discussion of AI's impact on journalism, the industry's decline, and the implications of that right here in Bayonne and Hudson County. Regardless, we cannot allow history to be deleted or rewritten. Many award-winning journalists got their start at the Bayonne Community News and the Hudson Reporter, breaking hard-hitting stories in the print newspapers and their former online presence with long-lasting ramifications. While this resolution honors the staff that were laid off that day and metaphorically went down with the ship, I would like to highlight some others who were once staff members of the print newspapers and have now gone on to bigger and brighter things. This includes former editor-in-chief and now published author Kate Rounds, the late legendary sports writer Jim Haig, former staff writer and now Hoboken Communications Manager Marilyn Baer, former staff writer and now North Bergen Public Information Officer Art Schwartz, former editor-in-chief and now writer at Patch.com Karen Listener, former staff writer and now current Tap Into staff writer Al Sullivan, and former staff writer and now Jersey Journal reporter Mark Cousseau, among many, many others. In fact, the Bayonne Community News and the Hudson Reporter print newspapers are what brought me to Hudson County. The job immersed me in the worlds of Bayonne and North Hudson, as well as Jersey City and Hoboken. And the stories I covered, the places I visit, visited, and the people I met touched me so deeply I moved here to cover it better. In a time when ensuring the public is well informed with the unbiased truth is of paramount importance, there should be more newspapers opening in Hudson County, not more closures. In order to not repeat the past, we must document it, study it, and learn from it. Local newspapers, especially print, are key in that preservation of that local history that may not otherwise be recorded anywhere else. I hope this may start a conversation about the need and importance to carve out a future that sees a reversal in the trending decline of local news. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Richard Kluger said, every time a newspaper dies, even a bad one, the country moves a little closer to authoritarianism. Thank you guys again.
Al Sullivan, you want to say Hello. a few words? <laughs> um, worked for the Hudson Reporter for 40 years. Okay, I was there pretty much through the foundation. Um, and many of these people were great writers. I disagree with a lot of what this resolution's about honoring. I think Community News was a community newspaper. It was a Hudson major Reporter part of a lot not. of people's lives. They looked forward to that delivery Tuesday I agree. night to Wednesday. And we, we yep. but the real nuts and bolts of it was always the people who work for it, not the management. And I understand. I have a problem honoring a history of management that did not respect the people who work for it. I mean, I was laid off early and I got a really good severance package. They did not. Okay, these were, you know, Joe Barry, I respect, but he designed this institution to protect his real estate. The community news is a different entity. Ed was a great man and he did great things here. But I don't, I have a problem honoring some, the legacy. Okay. I, I can understand when you write a resolution like this, you have to give the history, and I can't rewrite that history. Well, I wrote, I wrote a lot of the history. Yeah. I mean, I wrote hundred, I won hundreds of right. awards for this paper, right. okay? But I still disagree with honoring something that doesn't okay. honor the community, okay? I understand. Sorry. All right. I understand. Thanks. We can agree to disagree, Al. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Anybody else? And on CR9, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Al, I would like to just offer you that I think where um, the council president's uh, communication comes from is in hoping to honor the institution as a whole. And I think we all realize that it, it is more often than not um, the little people that truly make it what it was. Um, so I, I hope you gain no disrespect from um, the honor that we bestow. It, it, is, it is to both of you, and, and Dan, I, I hope you know this, that, um, that we owe a tremendous amount of thanks, and, and we realize who made it what it was. Um, so with that, I, I do vote aye. Mr. Lapalooza. It's the institution of the 41 years of this paper so I understand what you're saying, but it's kind of commemorating the whole thing. And it was a major part of a lot of people's lives looking for that delivery, like I said, on Tuesday, um, for many different reasons. Some people liked looking at those letters to the editor. They disappeared the last few years. But there were always announcements. There was obituaries. There was things that we didn't even talk about. But it was your personal touch in the writings that you did your personal touch, you know. It was the things that, the little things that people do that don't even get credit for. And that's what really made this a special, special uh, newsprint media. Unfortunately, the way times are, you hit the nail on the head when you said people are going online for their news and unfortunately print is very difficult. Uh, you know, it's very near and dear to my heart. I specialize in journalism at Seton Hall. It was print journalism when I was there, because I'm, I'm old now. But nevertheless, we have to work with these changes. And we want to commemorate the 41 years of the community news. And uh, with that, I'll vote aye. Okay. R1 is a resolution moved by the council president, Lapalooza, a resolution approving a agreement modifications to enable water sewer system improvements, specifically four modifications to Bayonne's concession agreement with Bayonne Water Joint Ventures LLC to allow its operator, Viola Water Contractors Operators USA, Inc., to carry out the following projects. One, the 10th Street water and sewer line improvements. Two, Ingram Air Avenue stormwater discharge pipe improvements. Three, top seven lead service line replacement. And four, Oak Street sanitary pump replacement. And Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. Any questions on R1? Mm -hmm. And on R1, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. R2 is moved by Councilmember Carroll, authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with Remington Vernick Engineer 2, Inc. 
for professional engineering services for the Cottage Street Park area flood mitigation project for the lump sum fee of $163,500. Who'd like to second? second? And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. I don't need to repeat at length. We went over it uh, at last week, but this is a major step in the right direction, as is the last uh, resolution. As much of that work is downtown, and even though I may have taken a shot at them moments ago, we talked about working hand in hand with the Board of Ed so as to use some of their parking lots for the working man who's got to wake up and come home late and find spots on the street when they dig it up. So I vote aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R3 is authorizing the execution of a redevelopment agreement buying between the City of Bayonne and Avenue E Loss Urban Renewal LLC for the property located at 196-200 Avenue E, which is identified as Block 458, Lots 7, 8, and 9, as shown on the official tax map of the city. It's moved by the Council President. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Or four, authorizing an execution of a redevelopment agreement buying between the City of Bayonne and 1207-1211 JFK Boulevard Urban Renewal LLC for the property located at 1207-1211 JFK Kennedy Boulevard, which is identified as Block 24, Lots 2 and 3. It's moved by the Council President. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Or five is authorizing and directing the planning board of the City of Bayonne to conduct a preliminary investigation to determine whether certain property located at 508 Avenue A, 510-514 Avenue A, and 134-136 West 22nd Street, which is identified as Block 208, Slot 1.01, Four and 35, as shown on the official tax map of the city, constitutes a non-condemnation area in need of redevelopment, pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law, and authorizing the preparation of a redevelopment plan for said property. Would like to move it. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Yeah, I am. I. I apologize. Um, Director Skillinger is in here. Um, Mr. Maselli, do I recall that this is one of your projects? Do you mind if I just clarify a few things with you before we all offer our vote? I'm sorry. Can you refresh my memory? Sure. Um, this this uh, request is being put forth by the owner of the current owner of the property. Correct. And am I correct? in recalling that one is uh, vacant, unimproved land, and one is a, a home? Yeah, so I think a couple of, I think two lots are, um, constitute the vacant area. I think, I haven't, I, I, I think the one lot is, is a home, and he does own that. Um, so all three are his. We're looking at that to see if we even need it, uh, for the redevelopment, or if we would need it for setback, or uh, he wanted to include it to see if it gave us flexibility to do a, a different project or to create more of a buffer to the residential neighborhood. So sometimes you include properties in redevelopment areas because they're necessary for the effective redevelopment of the area. I think that's what this would qualify under. We haven't really studied it yet, but I did ask the client if he wanted to include that because it's it's a home, uh, and he's uh, presumably got tenants there. Uh, and he said, yeah, let's see, because we might need it for the design. We haven't finalized anything yet, but uh, it might very well be that that lot is not necessary to the development. But we wanted to leave the option open and study it at least. So it's currently um, rental property. I don't, yeah, and I don't know if there's even a tenant there. I actually didn't ask him that. I assumed because it looked like it was pretty well maintained, but, um, but I'm not 100% sure. One might assume he's not leaving that with uh, unearned income potential. Right. Um, and is the two lots that are vacant are on the corner. The home is, um, let's assume it's the third property yes. going down that street. It is. And it was a service station, I believe, at one point. Right, it and was it was demolished station. several years ago, and it's been an empty lot since. It's sort of this, 
it's the same developer as the one that you just approved. Yeah, I, I recall. And there's and, and we're safe. it was a service station, so we do we know if there are any potential DEPA issues or there, has that soil? There were probably. Uh, just like many lots, I, I would assume this is probably one of them in Bayonne that has uh, environmental. Um, if it is, we'll clean it up to residential standards. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So, back to Mr. Carroll. Well, I, proof of what these meetings are for, I, I was thinking something, and then the councilwoman brought something to light, and Mr. Maselli also said something that interested me. I, at first, I was thinking it's a vacant lot, it's ready to go, but so it didn't fulfill my requirements. However, given that it might have deep DEP complications, as well as they were looking at a property to see if they would need it in the plan, as was stated by Mr. Maselli, I think is interesting because we may want to consider going forward that some public parking be added to these projects as they go forward and they look at that when they look at the plan at the planning board. So it's, I will vote aye on this with an eye towards maybe making some improvements in the, na in the neighborhoods and the communities with public parking. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Ms. Lapalooza. Aye. Our six is authorizing and directing the planning board of the city of Bayonne to conduct a preliminary investigation to determine whether certain property located at 653-657 Avenue E, 47 East 41st, and 659 Avenue E, which is identified as Block 98, Slots 13, 14, and 15 on the official tax map of the city of Bayonne, constitutes a non-condemnation area of need of redevelopment pursuant to the local redevelopment and housing law and authorizing the preparation of a re redevelopment plan for said property. It's moved by the council president. Mr. Perez, will you second? Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. R7 is approve, authorizing and approving the transfer of a financial agreement and redevelopment agreement from Bayonne Equities B2 Urban Renewal LLC to BPT 281 LLC. And, and Madeline, that one is going to be pulled because it turns out the request is actually less than that. Uh, we don't need to acquiesce to this or affirm anything. It turns out that it's just a pledging of their assets um, or their interest in this in order to obtain a loan, so there isn't a transfer of anything being requested. It was misunderstood by outside counsel. Okay. And we will move on to R8. And R8, if I can just jump in before you start. Uh, on the blurb, it says it's a transfer of a portion of Block 3.301.03, Lot 3, to an adjoining lot. It turns out it's a portion of Block 301.03, Lot 3, and a portion of Lot 2 from that. Um, had a long, involved discussion this today with uh, counsel for the property owner, and I believe that the resolution that you have now accurately reflects that it's a, they were originally permitted to transfer a um, portion of Lot 3, Block 301.03, Subsequent to that, they were granted an amendment to the minor t subdivision to subdivide additional land from um, 301.032 to lot 1.02. So um, this is a simple um, transfer, essentially just square off it and make some lots more regular. Who would like to move it? Resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalooza? Aye. R9 authorizes the mayor and city clerk to an agreement, um, enter into an agreement with McManaman, Scotland, and Bauman LLC for professional legal services, including but not limited to legal representation of the city in all matters in connection with the city's water sewer utility and or appearance appearance on behalf of the city to assist or supplement the efforts of the law department in such other diverse municipal law matters as may be requested or and or approved by the city law director for a period commencing May 1st, 2024 through December 31st for an amount not to exceed $75,000. Moved by Councilmember Perez, Mr. Lapalooza, will you second? Second. 
And on that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R10 is authorizing and directing the planning board to conduct the preliminary investigation to determine whether the property located at 102.5-116 Avenue E, which is identified as Block 467, Lots 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 on the official tax map of the city constitutes a non-condemnation area in need of redevelopment pursuant to the local redevelopment housing law and <coughs> authorizing preparation of a redevelopment plan for said property. Okay, because I've um, uh, had a close eye on that area given the incident with the elderly gentleman. So this is further north of of that. Yes. Okay. Who would like to move it? <coughs> move. And second. Yeah. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. R11 authorizes the mayor and city clerk to an execute an agreement with Remington Vernick Engineers 2 L Inc. for professional engineering services for the 63rd Street pump station flood res resiliency project it's phase two for lump sum fee of $168,115. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R12 authorizes the mayor and city clerk to execute an agreement with New Jersey Humane Society for animal control services and animal sheltering services commencing May 1st, 2024 through December 31st, 2024 for an amount not to exceed $76,000. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. R13 is awarding a contract for improvements to Dennis P. Collins Park Phase 3 to Personal Giordano Construction LLC for the bid amount of $415,730. Move it. Second. And on that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. 1415. I've just been advised that we will be going to closed session because we do have settlement terms for R17. Do you want to do the. The 14 and 15 would be off. You want to do the add-ons before we? I would do the add-ons and the walk-ons, yeah. Okay. So, starting with add one, is authorizing the UEZ coordinator to take any and all actions and execute any and all documents allowing Evan Berman Productions to hold the 2024 Bayonne Food Truck Festival and Music Festival on Saturday, May 24th and authorizing the UEZ coordinator to issue payment to Evan Berman <coughs> Productions in order to manage, in, of the management fee of $18,050. Second. And on that one, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. And number two is ratifying and affirming the actions of the mayor and city clerk in executing an interlocal agreement to investigate it, report it, cases of elevated lead levels in blood and environmental monitoring of lead in paint where there is a complaint of suspected or confirmed presence of elevated blood levels of our citizens with Hudson Regional Health Commission for a three-year period commencing March 1st, 2024 and ending February 29th, 2027 for an amount not to exceed $17,500 and or 29 inspections, whichever is less. So move. Second. On the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. I'd like to say a couple of words on this uh, ordinance. <clears throat> this is great for the people here because I receive phone calls from people who 
who live these and live in these apartment complexes, and they always say that they have to check the lead and that they don't feel right. And so this is great. This will actually people will go and get tested and they can feel a lot better. It's an vote aye. Ms. Weimer. I vote aye as well. Ms. Lapalusa. Aye. Area three is amending resolution number 2402-14036, adopted February 14, 2024, authorizing an agreement with UCP of Hudson County for the provisions of providing the cost of the replacement for a rooftop HVAC unit to include that the said funds in the amount of $18,776 shall be chargeable to account number CBDG 1180. Move it. Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. At four is approving construction work hours for the property located at 63-67 New Hook Road, which property is identified as Block 416, Lot 3, as shown on the official map of the City of Bayonne. So moved. Second. On that resolution, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? And I gather, given that you seconded it, that this is far away from the... So, so I, and I had every intention of, of explaining further. So I can share with everyone, um, again, uh, I'm not opposed to this whatsoever. Um, this is the developer proposing um, work uh, that will not create a significant impact or noise impact on the community and doing so um, through the evening hours, the overnight hours, to limit the um, disruption to ongoing city traffic, our uh, pull on our um, police resources and, and traffic control, um, and it is in a non-residential area um, located at the far end of Hook Road. So my intention is to vote aye. And, and I vote aye as well. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. At five is approving construction hours for the property located at 69-73 LaFonte Way. Right. And this is far away from homes for me as well. Same, same comments. Out, same comments pretty much. It's a warehouse. We'd like to see it finished quicker. And by allowing them to do this, it will get done sooner. And, with and limit minimal the effect on the residents. Uh, there's, it's really other warehouses around. Who would like to move? No noise pollution. I'll move it. Second. And on the resolution, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Last one is from the Honorable James M. Davis, reappointing and appointing the following individuals to the Rent Control Board. Oh. And on that one, Mr. Booker? Aye. Mr. Carroll? I, I, I vote aye. I think these are some good people. I think they can handle some potentially more work in the future. And uh, I'm glad the board exists and we're continuing to pay attention to it. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Ms. Lapalusa? Aye. And we go to R16, which authorizes the Municipal Council to go into a closed session for this pending discussion and litigation. Um, Who would like to move it? As a whole? You can move it as a whole. And on R16 to go into closed session, Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll? Aye. Mr. Perez? Aye. Ms. Weimer? Aye. Mr. Lapalusa? Aye. Uh, Mr. Coffey, will we be coming back out? We will be coming out, and there will in all likelihood be uh, action in connection with the um, R17. To reconvene. Motion. Second. And a motion to Second. reconvene. Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalusa. Aye. Put your pen out now. <laughs> <laughs> and we will not be taking further action on R7. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. Second. <laughs> and a motion to adjourn, Mr. Booker. Should we vote? <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Mr. Booker, don't Why? leave. Why? Don't, Why? don't leave till you vote. Aye. Mr. Carroll. Aye. Mr. Perez. Aye. Ms. Weimer. Aye. Mr. Lapalooza. And for those who celebrate, happy Passover and happy Easter as well. I vote aye. Have a good night, everyone.